Um, thank you. Uh, so I wanted to first say this is aimed at security beginners, right? But of course, everyone's welcome. Maybe you'll pick up something new that you didn't know about. So I am Catherine Druckmann. I am an open source evangelist at Intel. Uh, I do a lot of stuff in my open source activities, including I am currently the co-chair of the Marketing Advisory Council at OpenSSF, yay OpenSSF, and uh, also by extension, the co-chair of the DevRel community at the OpenSSF. So, so among other things, I, I would love to uh, recruit some new participation there. So, so anyway, so, so let's talk about, uh, so what, what is this all about here? Um, so let's start with a few things that make open source security challenging, right? So some things that make open source so great are also things that make it challenging, right? It's so easy to pull in a project or a library as a dependency and get benefit from someone else's work, right? This is what open source is all about. Sharing is cool. Uh, but that comes with challenges and responsibilities. So let's talk about what those are. So quickly, um, a open source is everywhere. Uh, so getting security right is really important, right? Uh, so a, a 2024 synopsis report showed that 96% of their rather decent sized sample of code bases contained open source software. And of those, 77% of the code within those code bases was open source. And according to the Linux Foundation, and that was in 2022, uh, 70 to 90% of any given software is made up of open source components. You know, so, Yay, we won. <laughs> so, so now what? The open source community won. What does that mean? Open source is ubiquitous. Uh, Community-based development, though, presents its own set of security challenges, as I just said. So let's talk about what that means in considering how we evaluate, use, and even contribute to open source projects. Um, like, like all software, open source software has vulnerabilities from time to time. <laughs> So most of us are probably familiar with CVEs here, I think, if not common vulnerabilities and exposures. But especially this month, we might be aware of CVEs. Uh, so in the good old days, you know, CVEs were far less frequent. But as you can see, they are massively on the rise. You know, does that mean that software is becoming more vulnerable, less secure? No, not necessarily. It means that there's a lot more software, as we just saw. A lot more just lines of code. And there are also more eyes scrutinizing that software as a result. Um, now, this is obviously not all open source software, but given that we've just seen how prevalent open source is, this is significant. So the other thing, one thing to consider, so many dependencies, so many. With so many and so many moving parts, there is so much to keep track of. And we need to carefully consider what projects and libraries we want to include in our own projects. Uh, web applications in particular, JavaScript, <laughs> can get way up there in the number of dependencies. Uh, this visualization is actually not so terrible. I borrowed this because I thought it looked like a neat visualization of a dependency tree. This is actually a Drupal module, and incidentally, it is a deprecated one, so do not use it, but it, it's a nice image. Um, and it, but consider how many secondary and tertiary dependencies anything you pull in adds, and those numbers can grow really rapidly. And then consider how many of those might be maintained by a single maintainer. And so then let's just hope they don't get burned out, right? Um, so then well, let's talk about what we mean to be a consumer, right? So the things I'm mentioning are from the perspective of someone working on their own projects, even maintaining software to release. In those cases, we think in terms of evaluating dependencies and then taking responsibility for keeping tabs on them once they're in our own projects. So there's some basic considerations. I'll, I'll go into a little bit of detail on these. Um, the thing is, some of these things may not be the first things that you think about when you think about security, um, but they are important indicators to be considered as part of a whole when you're making your own determinations about what to include. But ultimately, I just want to get across a well-cared-for project tends to be a more secure and stable project. But a, a few things, right? So basic health, what does that mean? Does it have a maintainer? When was the last commit? Look at, look at the issue queue and... When was the last response to an issue? You want to see an active issue queue. Um, governance, does the project have a clearly stated license, for example? Is there one, more than one maintainer? Are there maintainers from more than one company or organization? All important things to, to consider. Releases, are, is there a regular release cadence? Um, do you see a predictable uh, release pattern? Are there minor releases every six months? Is there, is there an established process for doing releases? 
Um, are they, is the last release still in an alpha or beta state? We've all inc included them and no judgment here, but it's just yet another piece of data to consider. Um, the other thing is just community, right? Is there, a commu is there a contributor guide? Is there an established process for contributing back to the project? These are all signs of maturity and things that give you a little bit more reassurance when you're using a project. And then how are decisions made and communicated? Is there even a blog? Is the project communicating with its users? It's also a great sign of, of project maturity. Um, and then the last thing is I wanna talk about uh, bug reporting. Is there an established secure bug reporting process? That's also a really great sign. Uh, for, for especially for reporting vulnerabilities. So I also wanted to say, after we've looked at these things, right, there are folks in the community working towards solutions to some of these issues. I mean, easing the burden on, on developers and, and hopefully someday making the easy way the secure way. And I wanna I mention just a few of them. So the first tool I wanna to quickly mention, CVE bin tool. It is maintained by a lovely person at Intel. Her name is Terry Oda and others, she mentors Google Summer of Code students from time to time. This is a binary scanner and it helps you determine uh, which packages may have been included as a, in a piece of software. There are currently 290 checkers. Uh, they focus on common vulnerable open source components like OpenSSL and others. Um, and then it includes tools for scanning known component lists in various formats like SBOMs, uh, CSVs, uh, and things like that. So check that out. Again, lightning talk, I'm blowing through these. <laughs> so, and there's another thing I wanted to mention, OpenSSF best practices badge. Yeah, I mean, it's not widely adopted enough yet, I would say, but it is, I think it's growing. There are several hundred projects, I believe, using this, but it's a quick and easy way to just look and see uh, that some best practices are followed, right? There are varying levels of best practices. You have passing, you have silver, you have gold, and then you can drill down into it and see various criteria and see where they're working to improve and then the current state. So one more, one more tool to check out. And the other one I wanna spend a little bit more time on is OpenSSF scorecard. Now this one, what is this, right? It's a really quick list of automated checks. You can use it on, on the command line and you can use it as a GitHub action. Um, you can integrate it into your CI CD pipeline. Good stuff. Uh, really great people working on it. So you can also, I just want to point out, you can get the score you know, in the terminal, just scan any project you're considering. Or some list of re uh, regularly scanned projects are also uh, viewable on the web interface on the, the project site. So really quickly, let's evaluate some software. What does it mean to quickly go through and, and, and assess the health and, of a project and decide whether you want to include it? So let's pick a random project. This one is Python Fire. It looks pretty promising, right? You've got, uh, you've got a lot of users, a lot of contributors. It has some documentation. All of these are great signs, right? But let's dig a little deeper and run, run it through scorecard. So that you, you, all you have to do is run this command. I'll let you take a little picture there. <laughs> and, then, and then here it is in action. I don't believe in live demos, so <laughs> it's very quick, I promise. Um, and it will show you just what the output looks like on the, on the terminal. Woo, magic, look at all these checks, right? And it assigns each a score. Now I'm gonna move on to the next slide because it, it, it's easier to read. So this one happens to be one of those projects that's regularly scanned. You can actually look at the web interface. So what do we see here, right? We see some good and, and we see some bad. No dangerous workflows, and you see that each one of these checks is given a weight, and that's a critical one. So we're, we're happy to see that, right? Um, what else do we see? that's maybe not so good, ah, no license, that's weird. Um, so yeah, so we, each of these is given a weight and, and all of this data helps you make determinations about the project. So inevitably someone is going to ask me, what is a good score? Well, that's a really complicated answer. And uh, the short answer, I'm gonna say it depends. It depends on your needs, it depends on your organization. The longer answer is find me later and we'll talk about it because this is a lightning talk. <laughs> so, I want to leave you oh yeah, with one final thought, and that is developers don't owe you anything. When you ingest open source projects for your own purposes, you should feel a sense of ownership. You're now responsible for keeping tabs on the project, staying on top of things, and hopefully the tools I just shared will help you out a little bit. So I wanna leave you with this last slide. Um, I promise this is safe. <laughs> I scanned it myself. Um, I have some links to some of these tools. I have some, some more info. I have my own social links. I, have a, I will have a PDF of this. And uh, yeah, so ch please check it out. 
And thank you all. I, I hit the time. I think I, I got it exactly right. Pretty proud of myself for that. <laughs> A little nervous. But yeah, thanks everyone. Join the Open SSF. Ask David. Hi, David. <laughs> so thank you everyone for, for joining and uh, yeah, have a good rest of your event.